Hi, this is a video to help you through the activity on buffers and the bicarbonate system. Bicarbonate is a buffer in your blood. A buffer is a weak acid and its conjugate base. Here is an example of a buffer reaction. A buffer resists change in hydrogen ion concentration, hydronium ion concentration, or in other words, it resists change in pH. It's very important in your body to maintain a, a consistent pH somewhere around 7.4. Your blood pH can vary between 7.35 and 7.45 without any problem. However, if it varies outside of this range, it can cause acidosis or alkalosis. Here's the reaction that is a buffer in your blood. This is the bicarbonate buffer. Notice here that we have bicarbonate and carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a weak acid, and bicarbonate is its conjugate base. Hydronium ion, or hydrogen ion, reacts with bicarbonate to give you water and carbonic acid. This equilibrium resists change in hydronium ion concentration. If there's an increase in hydronium ion concentration in your blood due to some external circumstance, the extra hydronium ion will react with bicarbonate to give you water and carbonic acid. Therefore, a dramatic increase in this hydronium ion is buffered by this reaction. On the other hand, if some of the acid in your blood reacts with base and you remove this acid, some of the carbonic acid will react with water to produce more of the acid hydronium ion. So a decrease in hydronium ion concentration will be buffered by this reaction. A buffer is any weak acid and its conjugate base. A strong acid or strong base cannot be part of a buffer system. This is an acid-base reaction. Bicarbonate and carbonic acid are conjugate acid-base pair, and this is the weak acid-base conjugate pair that is the buffer in your blood. There's another equilibrium that affects this reaction and is linked. Carbonic acid and water can react, and the carbonic acid decomposes into another water molecule and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is exhaled when we breathe. This second reaction is the decomposition of carbonic acid, and it's technically not part of the buffer. However, it does affect the buffer, and therefore it affects the concentration of hydronium ion in solution. So breathing, exhaling carbon dioxide, uh, can affect the pH of your blood. The, opposite, the reaction in the opposite direction is called synthesis because we're taking carbon dioxide and water and creating this carbonic acid. These two equilibria are linked. And in a moment, I'm going to write an abbreviated version of this link between the acid in your blood and carbon dioxide. The change in carbon dioxide concentration in your blood can dramatically affect the pH. So it's simpler sometimes and easier to just look at these two reactions linked and ignore the middle step. This reaction is still balanced and it's still true. Even though it's technically linked by another equilibrium step, you can simplify the reaction and look at it just like this. Looking at this abbreviated equilibrium, we can see the direct link between the carbon dioxide concentration in your blood and the acid in your blood, or pH. Breathing has two main purposes. Breathing in gets oxygen into our blood. The oxygen is then metabolized by our cells and produces carbon dioxide. When we breathe out, we get rid of carbon dioxide. The breathing in of oxygen does not affect this equilibrium because oxygen is not one of the reactants or products. However, getting rid of carbon dioxide can be important. If carbon dioxide builds up, you would increase the carbon dioxide concentration and you would put the system out of equilibrium. Because of Le Chatelier's principle, the equilibrium would then shift to reach equilibrium again. And if you weren't breathing and you weren't getting rid of carbon dioxide, you would actually increase the concentration of acid in your blood and decrease the pH. This is a situation called acidosis because there's excess acid in your blood and it can be dangerous. On the other hand, if you're getting rid of too much carbon dioxide because you're hyperventilating, you're removing carbon dioxide from the system. It puts the system out of equilibrium, and according to Le Chatelier's principle, this equation would shift to the right to produce more carbon dioxide. But that would get rid of acid, and it can get rid of too much acid 
causing a decrease in acid concentration and an increase in pH. This is called alkalosis, and it can also be dangerous. Acidosis is treated in the clinic by injection of sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate is an ionic compound, and it dissociates in water to give you sodium ions and bicarbonate ions. Injecting bicarbonate into the blood will increase the concentration of bicarbonate. The extra bicarbonate will react with extra acid and shift this equilibrium to the right to produce more carbon dioxide. Sodium bicarbonate is the same compound you have in baking soda. Alkalosis is a condition that's caused by hyperventilation. One way to treat alkalosis is by breathing into a paper bag. The reason that you breathe into a paper bag is that when you inhale again, you're inhaling the carbon dioxide that you just exhaled. And that stops the loss of carbon dioxide. When you're hyperventilating, you're exhaling too much carbon dioxide. So if you inhale that carbon dioxide again, it prevents the shift of this equilibrium too far to the right. So by increasing the amount of carbon dioxide you inhale, you shift this back to the left-hand side and you prevent alkalosis by preventing the loss of acid from your blood. The important part of this activity is to have a conceptual understanding of equilibrium and how the bicarbonate buffer in your blood affects pH through breathing. Please try the questions, make sure that you're correct, and let me know if you have any questions. If you like this video, please let me know by giving me a vote.